some of the things I would say you can take away from this, we'll go ahead and set it up real quick. It's not going to be a full detailed setup. But the big thing is, most biggest biggest issues that I'm seeing and we're hearing about is the two wires inside there that you need to connect on the inside where the blower section is at. You need to make sure this piece of junk doesn't get bound up. You need to make sure that it spins back and forth freely. Make sure you leave this actual with the unit, not throw it away. Make sure this stuff's up so it's not getting caught on nothing. Make sure these collars match up. Make sure the sensors match straight in here. And honestly, that should have a piece of sheet metal over the top of it. So when some guys spray the water in there, it doesn't soak it and destroy it. Pretty much cut, cut plug and play here on this. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. How's it going, people? So today we are setting up an economizer, a new economizer for a Siemens Climax controller. The economizer in place here, this didn't come in the unit. We ended up wiring this up. We took the extra plug, which you should always leave wired back here in case this ever fails. You'll be able to plug it right in there and bypass it. We ended up running the sensor down through here. We had a nice little grommet, matched up the wires, which we gotta make sure that's still right because I didn't get any instructions with this. I'm pulling it off the iPad. We mounted that little sensor down here in this little channel pack here. We got that mounted there. You gotta remember a lot of times the guys will wash this out because they're not thinking, don't realize there's a sensor in there and then they end up destroying the sensor. So what happened here on this place is a semi came through and ended up wiping out the HVAC unit, smashed this unit, and then smashed that unit. And obviously that one's new. And this one here is new. I did the startup here on it in April, did everything. And I just now noticed as I was messing with the thermostat wires, reason why you never run your knife around the wire is because you will cut into it and then you end up causing nicks in the wire like they did right here that's why this happened and if you look here on the red it's been hit too because once you've done that you've just nicked it and you don't realize it but before you know it you're bending into place and you have a green wire or a red wire pop off we got the siemens controller like i said this is the climatics i haven't set one of these up yet i've heard about it some of the other guys said they didn't have instructions either and it kind of sucked i don't know why they got rid of the jade controller it worked just fine this really did not come pre-wired worth of crap. So what it did come with was this wiring harness here. It goes all the way across, which I just ran it. Punched it through that hole right there. Brought it down here. Usually that gets mounted down here, but I don't like that because then you have possible chance of wires getting pulled into it. Where I've got it at there is covered by the outside sheathing stuff and the water's gonna drip straight down. What I'm in the middle of right now is seeing about the setup on this. Supposedly, you can hook up a USB stick to this thing and set it up with your phone through this right here. And of course it's possibly proprietary. I'm not sure just yet. And you've got pretty simple setups. This ain't rocket science, but you know, when you're not familiar with it, it does take a little longer. So that's the reason why we're making the video. The mixed air temperature and outdoor air temperature and all that, that mostly made its way into this wiring harness. So the best way to strip this is either use one of the wires, strip one out on the wire, then cut it off after you've screwed it up and then drag the wire back, or you can use the little pull string here, but half the time that pull string breaks. I usually just grab a single conductor, yank it back, and then I pull it to here, and then end up coming in here behind it with the snippers. If you got it like that, you can't cut into it. Boom, got rid of it. Now you have a nice cut there, and you don't have to worry about it getting any nicks. We can see here that the snowflake, the temperature sensor, and that button there, all are blinking and then we see here that that means it's in commissioning mode we've got the thermostat wires unhooked here and now we've just gone through and told it whether or not we have auxiliary switches or whether or not what kind of sensors we have because obviously on the mixed air temperature sensor we just got a generic thermistor on the actual outdoor temperature sensor, we have a humidity type sensor, which is your enthalpy. And now we're kind of getting down in here to the testing phase, which you look over here to the side, see a seven? Well, we was originally in six. Now we're in seven, damper open. So we hit enter, and right now it's telling it to open. And sure enough, it's starting to open. And it is wide open. I do not like this. That right there looks like there's some issues going on. But I mean, I'm looking to see if it, these are all the same way. Yeah, see right there, it just dropped down. So it's almost like it was getting ready to bind and pop out of place. All right, to make this a little easier, there's things that you gotta do. Probably in the instructions somewhere hidden, but there is outdoor temperature sensor that you have to dig out. And that wire was wire tied right up in here. So originally you had a wiring harness that went from here across to here. I thought they weren't using it, but no, you need to attach it. Here's the factory stuff. So I put a wire tie on there. 
This here was wire tied that way. You didn't even see it. Usually they leave things dangling. They didn't do it in this case. That right here is my outdoor humidity sensor that needed to be hooked up. So as long as you got those two wires hooked there, you've got most of your problems taken care of. Come over to here, and as long as your installers didn't bind this up like I had happen, as soon as I unhook this, whoop, it sprung shut because I was having an actuator error. So I checked my voltages there. I had 24 volts on red and black. You got your white, which is your DC, and your feedback's on green. So here is the actual outdoor temperature sensor. So it plugs into there, it comes up to these here. So you've got pink to pink, yellow to yellow, red to red, purple to purple. You have these leftover wires here that aren't gonna be used for anything. These are in a longer harness, don't worry about it, whatever. As long as you got your jumper thing there, which I kind of screwed them the way I wound that up, they can cut the wire tie and they'll be all right. What I need to do here is get this unbound. This does not want to turn. You can see right here, I tried to rotate this and it's bound up. You can see right there, it's digging into it. And that's the problem with some of these. They should put a mylar plastic piece on the bottom and that would allow that to nice skid right across it. You know darn well, this stuff's never going to be perfectly square. And look, now I can change these real easy. Oop, look at that, nice and easy, I can change it. Something is hooked back here in the back. I don't know what he did. I had this in place before I got here. Damn thing's not going anywhere. I mean, a couple screws would be good enough. Make sure you aren't twisted left to right. Make sure you're not twisted front to back. These things have got pivot points all in there. You can see what happened. You can see how it gouged into it. That's, I thought it looked really slow the way it was operating. Here's what this economizer looks like. It, it was not screwed in there. I think what we got, you got all these crooked ass looking angles down here. And you got this piece here like that and you kind of get hooked in between there on some of that stuff. And if this unit's not, not perfectly square like this, which I about bet you it's probably not, so you can see a little bit of a wrinkle here, which means it's probably been screwed with when they had to hook this up. This was existing stuff that got damaged. So we need to get this back to closed position. See how nice and easy that turns? Put the bar in there like that. Hook the actuator up. It goes to that position, that's spring shut, I think. Yep, so this way is gonna be powered open. There you go, that's gonna power it nice and tight. So we're gonna put that back on top. There we go, now this piece here, it's just a little bracket. It goes down and holds that there, and then we're gonna tighten that set screw up there when we're done. Nope, don't hit it, that's good. So we're not hitting there. Okay, obviously now it won't turn because that thing, and that's what sucks, you can't tell if it's bound or not because that actuator's on there. However, you can pull that out, and now you can turn it. Well, we'll turn it before we put that in, and then we'll finish pinning it. So let's set it back into place. You do have a leftover orange wire, just so you know. That's not used for anything. This sensor right here has a 10K sensor inside of it, and you have a zero to 10 volt humidity sensor. So you have two settings in there, humidity, and you have sensor. Okay, we just popped it up in there. That fits right in between there like that. Right there, nothing needs to be pinned. Everything's getting done out here. We kind of gave it a kick over to get it over into place. It looks like we're fairly square up and down. We'll see, we'll pin it, we'll pin it here on this one side and let's see how it does. So we've got it in there. It's perfectly aligned with this piece here to there. And I am thinking something is bound in this framework. So we're still loose over here on this one side. We can go in and out. It turns, but man, it's wanting to gouge down there. Now this comes down to micro metal, either coming up with a better design here and either getting that to seal up a little bit better with a piece of plastic in there. I mean, you can probably get a hammer and smash it down there, which is bull crap. You shouldn't have to do that. But you can see we're bound. I mean, it's you can see we're gouged. And we are super stupid tight. I mean, there is no... No extra room, there is there, but down here, none. So this piece here needs to go down, and it can't go down no further. So what you could do is raise this up a little bit and then let it dip down, and that might work. But I mean, they really should have had some washers or something in here. Hell, who knows? Factory that might have built it may not have freaking put the washers in there or something. There's none in here, so maybe there is none. But either way, it's bound up and it's not gonna work. This isn't plug and play if you have to build a new damn unit when you're doing it. Okay, so we lo loosened it back up because it did it again. So right now, I can easily turn this thing. That's how you should be able to do it. Two fingers, you should be able to turn that. That's how easy it should turn. But as soon as you push that over this way, 
like that right there, and it causes a bind back here in the back, and it, it catches. So you're about forced to just leave it loose in there. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Your problem is this right here. You can see, you can see that we're all the way over, almost all the way over here. As soon as you push that over there, that causes it to twist it. Because see, it's pinned down there, so you're lifting it up, it's causing a wheelie like, and it makes that back pin up. And you can see right back here in the back, there is no room for error, none. Problem is when we push that in, yeah, I can feel that resistance already. So this this whole panel here is a problem. So how do you, how do you change that thing? You know, what do you do there on that? So you've got this over here. That's going to suck it in and probably get right into it. So that damper sets there like that. I picked it up and laid it down flat. You can see here why we're having issues. Look how tight that is. Look at that. How, how do you get, how, how do you have any tolerance for any type of misalignment at all? There's none. You think this crap's installed in a freaking uh, showroom? Concrete's not always flat. Units don't always come square. Literally, you just bend that a little bit and she's like whopper jawed. I don't think anything on the bottom because there's screws there. You gotta watch, you don't put your hand through. Somebody screwed up through the bottom. Probably these dang screws they got probably are, is hitting down there on that is what I'm guessing. We're gonna cut them screws out. Just in case we get rid of this one. Okay, you take your certified three pound hammer there and you adjust this down here because they didn't do it. And you pretty much make room so this thing can open and close so it doesn't get caught on stuff. Try not to cut yourself. They used uh, stainless steel flexible stuff to kind of make a, a floating seal of some sort. Look how they made it there, but here not. So why wouldn't you support this the same way? So there's nothing supporting this. If it was all the same height there, that would give it a possibility of not doing one of these twist deals where it's gonna sit there and cause the issues that it's having. Okay, so it kind of works. Opens great this way. It's actually screwed in down below there, there, there skip one come up but we're still getting screwed back here on that back corner there that piece of there is getting caught on still i got it bent down but yet it still freaking hits on it all right so we made some more adjustments to say the least we took care of that piece there that was acting up catching on stuff so you gotta be careful if you're gonna knock it down a little bit in the back corner because then you actually push the outside edge corners in too but everything works the way it should. That should be about as far as it ever goes. I highly doubt it will be 100% over like that. But either way, we've got it. So we're gonna put it back to close like that. Pin in there, make sure it hits. Yeah, there we go, boom. It just dropped in. There we go, dropped in. So we get the set screw set. Go. Now it's locked in. That's all the way screwed in. All the way across. You can look at it. Looks like there's more here than there is over here. I don't know. Not my monkey, not my circus, man. I don't know what to tell you. Some of this stuff's just ridiculous. First Siemens I've done, now this thing here has been built by them forever. Horizontal's always been an issue in the past. I've had this happen before. So we're gonna wire tie this up so it doesn't get caught into the gears and stuff. We'll hook this back up and we'll run it through a cycle. Okay, I think this is the reason why this little bag here of smaller screws, you know, they're like little shorties. See these little silver shiny ones? I think you're supposed to use those instead of these big long monster ones that they were running in there. That's pushing this out, making it bind up too. Should just have the service guy install this thing. I sure heck won't forget this crap. This is ridiculous. I'll get an ass. What took you so long? What took you so long to get that done? Was you making them YouTube videos? Was you was you making them videos of it? Is that why it took so long? Laying in the blood puddles, how about it? So really the only thing they got holding that on there is these little hook jobs here. He tried to run them into the big things back here, but you know that ain't working so good. So if we come down here and run right into that right there, you'd be alright. So we'll probably run one of these big honking jobbers in there like that and we'll zip her in there. 
I get a little extra strength. I don't think we need 50 of them inside of it because that's where I think some of our issues are coming through them too. Okay, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna put it to open, damper open. So we went in there, scrolled to it. It gave you some red blinky blinks there. Should be doing a test run now. See if this thing will open up. I see it moving. Look at that. Still creeping slower than anything I've ever seen, but you know, whatever. Everything's bolted in, screwed in, whatever you want to call it. I mean, that thing ain't going nowhere. The longer ones that he had in here, those just don't seem like they're going to hit anything, luckily. You see those marks where it beat the heck out of the prior to. I'm pushing against it and it's actually opening it up still. So that's good. And back corner back here. closes now then we can set minimum position and maybe we can freaking leave this has turned into like six day job all because they couldn't get the nice honeywell controller they went to this thing i don't like this thing at all it's got a lot of options on it that i don't need there it goes closed look at that so some of the things i would say you can take away from this we'll go ahead and set it up real quick it's not gonna be a full detailed setup but the big thing is most biggest biggest issues that i'm seeing we're hearing about is the two wires inside there that you need to connect on the inside where the blower section is at. You need to make sure this piece of junk doesn't get bound up. You need to make sure that it spins back and forth freely. Make sure you leave this actual with the unit, not throw it away. Make sure this stuff's up so it's not getting caught on nothing. Make sure these collars match up. Make sure the sensors match during in here. And honestly, that should have a piece of sheet metal over the top of it. So when some guys spray the water in there, it doesn't soak it and destroy it. And then, uh, pretty much cut, cut plug and play here on this. This here has always been unplug the one, plug it back in, string it across. We gotta get those mounted up there against that stuff up there. But and then, uh, like I said, we gotta set the minimum position, double check the uh, lockout temperatures for my area. Okay, what we should have is what we got now. We got free call blinking saying we don't have free cool. Sensors green meaning it's working. The DA DAC, which is the damper control, it's working too and feeding back. So we're good there. Now we gotta go in here Go into our advanced and uh, basic settings, which is underneath number two settings. Anything you look in here, which is hard to see, areas here it says one in front, and then you've got areas here that say two. These is like underneath the basic settings. So there's a number in front of it, and then it says temperature, whatever. So one, two, three, all the way through eight is your different settings. So that's how you can jump around to different areas. So there it's going into cooling. I need to adjust my damper minimum position and stuff yet. Now, one thing it says here is press. That means present value, not pressure. Kind of dumb, but you know, that's what you would be thinking normally, and that's not what it means. All right, guys, everything's back together, and we are out of here. That took way too long, but hopefully that'll help speed it up for you guys if you know what to look for. Well, guys, I kind of wrapped that one up. Uh, luckily, we have a pretty good guy at Carrier now who's through our distributor. And he helped me with this one and the 27 ton, whatever it was, unit that I did. And he was really good on that too. Those things really make a difference when you're having some issues. Um, I was originally sent with the wrong manual, one for a jade control and the jade control will not, obviously that manual is worthless. The big thing was knowing that they had the two wires for the sensors uh, hidden in the blower compartment. Whereas normally that is already in the loom. You don't have to go and do that. Uh, here you did. Other thing would be knowing that you've got to program the sensor that, you know, normally with Honeywell, you have one data link going through there and it does the humidity and temperature on its own, you know, type of protocol. This one here theoretically is one sensor with two sensors inside of it. Basically, you've got one sensor zero to 10 volt and the other one is resistance only like a 10K or whatever. That's a new thing that you're not used to with the Honeywell. Got that done, uh, went ahead and set my voltage. 3.6 is what it is for uh, high usually. Uh, I had to set my low and high. I always set them separate. Low will be more open, whereas high will be less open. Just because if you're having to go into high, chances are you're already having a problem keeping up. Uh, whereas low, you're gonna bring in your makeup air that you need, your 10% or whatever they require. Other than that, I mean, it was just a hassle dealing with that stupid economizer. I was with the guy as he was installing it. And I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. I think, you know, there was no way to know that it was bound because 
the motor holds it in place and you can't move it. So there's, you know, no way to know that without unhooking it. So I know what to look for now. I know that the horizontals can be a major pain in the butt. You may not agree with uh, cutting that trim piece, but if it's getting caught on it, I'd rather it work than not. And a little bit of leakage from the inside, that's just absolutely stupid. I mean, who cares? Uh, oh, I gotta get 100% sealed off from the inside of the building and bring 100% outside air in. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.